would shake So say goodbye to everything you ever knew before And I'd understand if you went running out the door And I'll keep you safe And no harm will ever come to you, I swear And I'll kill if they even dare Hello, Senior Boots. Hello, Your Highness. How are you? It's Senorita Highness. Oh, oh you uh, are senior, very. I really don't know what it is. Pretty. I'm just trying to learn Spanish. It's not okay. working very well. That's okay. It's winter, so it's dark out. Doesn't it, matter it what time of the day it is. Anytime after 3 p.m. Pretty it's much. Freaking dark. Yep. Freaking dark. How you doing? I'm doing really good. How you doing, there, guy? Oh. Today? Oh. I was driving, and there was a Minnesotan in front of me. I said, hey there, tell your folks I says hi. Did they? I did. Did they tell them? They did it because I was in the car, so. Welcome to Michigan Murders and Music, where we discuss murders in our gorgeous state and top it off with a little homegrown music, leaving you with a happy ending and on a good note. A damn good note. And those happy endings... I mean, we know the boys love those happy endings. Yeah, so do the ladies. Uh, oh the ladies, God. the ladies. And if they don't get one, they get angry. Do the content warning and then we'll do some business. Oh, here is our explicit content warning. Oh, shit. You know what the day is right now? I'm going to give you the date. No, I'm not. Um, if Is it pertinent to the content no. warning? Nope. Okay. Nope. Okay. If you walk across my grandfather's backyard and put tracks in his beautiful virgin snow, there will be consequences. And that's not on us. Don't do it. Don't leave your goddamn... Okay, first, you... you'll end up on a Mr. Ballin show. Oh, like absolutely. some mysterious person just walked up to the house and left their footprints there. Yep, you, you'll be a little... Secondly, Oof. I'll hunt a bitch down. Oh... I already swore. Yeah, I'm, I haven't finished our explicit content. Warning. Where you go? So if you do that across my grandfather's backyard, you should know better. Just don't do it, please. For the love of God, don't even look at his snow. I can't stress this strongly enough. Don't do it. I Please. <laughs> I feel like there may or may not be a little bit of personal feelings behind this. I, yeah, I haven't yeah. heard the story. I don't want to hear the story. Don't let your kids listen to us. Don't even nope, nope. think oh, about and it. And Her Highness is going to say naughty words. Dude, vulgar. Yes. Vagina-like vulgar. Don't let, don't let <laughs> your kids <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> and I smoke weed. What? You don't want to let your kids smoke weed. It's, Fuck no. Uh, you can do it to get away from society. your... That's the bane of society. Bane, bitch. I'm a bitch bitch. I'm a Bane bitch. Your That's Highness. That's all there is to it. Thank you, everyone, for letting us dig down into your ear canals, climb in there like a spider in the middle of the night, and let our voices seep into your brain. We appreciate you so freaking much. Yes, thank you. You guys want a sticker? You want a Michigan Murders and Music sticker? We have two different kinds. One with our logo and one that just says Michigan Murders and Music. And it's an oval like areola. And all just you drop have us to an do email. is say, hey, yep, we want a fucking sticker. Yep, we'll mail one and to I'll you. Send you a sticker. We won't even put our spit on the envelope because of COVID. I'll use vodka, dudes. Also, it's if great. you would like to keep our podcast commercial free and independent. Mm hmm. And how. E Remember that saying when everybody's like, and yes. how? Well, you can go to our website, and if you're feeling a little tipsy, you can check out our tipsy jar. I like tipsy people. Just go to the tipsy jar. You can add any amount that you care for. It'd be great. And, and share us with a friend. You won't if have you can. to listen to commercials. Mm -hmm. Share us with a couple friends. Follow us on all the places. Do all the things. Boot. Yes. I have not told you, but I have a secret new sticker design coming out, and oh. I can't wait. Oh. Oh, and it no, kind of I... has something to do with throw your hand up. No, I want to see it. No, not not now. Okay. I'll you, wait. You can record and do shit right, and then maybe you'll get rewarded. Oh, like with a happy ending? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, what that's gonna You're happen? You're so funny. Oh. Good fucking lord, we don't. Your have highness, the, we don't have the energy for happy endings. God, nope, nope, and it's a waste of time. Put up your hand. Right here, hand is up. We are going to one of the best named cities, and we're not gonna joke about it. Besides, just saying it's a fucking great name. The city is called Colon. It's Colon. Michigan. Yep. And it's right down here, just a oh. little ways wow, we, south. Wow, we have not been there. And east of Kalamazoo Portage, so that area right it there. It looks like if you went like straight up from the middle of your wrist yeah. and then yeah. Up, yeah, up pretty much. to where that little line maybe wise off. Well, people, right in that people area. People know where Kalamazoo is, I, it's I think. It's south of I mean, Kalamazoo. Yeah, south and, and east of Kalamazoo, just Bessie. a little ways. Kind of a, a little angle yeah, from just the a kitty little corner. Jag. Colon. Colon mm-hmm. Township. Not Colin. Colon. No, Colon. Colon, Michigan. Who are we featuring this week, Mr. Boot Senior Boot? We are featuring a very talented singer, songwriter, mm. just great musician. Guitar player. Yep. Mark Holy Heisinger. He's holy, Mark Heisinga, because dang. Mm-hmm. The name of the song Stop. is This Is The Time, and we will remind you of that before we play him. So yeah, we're off to Colon, Michigan, boo. Colon, Michigan. Doug Harry Stewart, Michigan Department of Corrections, number 799-235, Chippewa Correctional Facility. In Colon Township. Oh, it's is in? Where we're going. No, Colin? no. Oh. No, no, this is where the story is, ah. Derek Guy. In the small town of Colon, Colon Township, in the year 2000, the census said there was about 3,400 people there. It's 20, it's about to be 2022. Holy crap, I'm Oh my holy. goodness. So 20, have, have they not done a census since then? Yeah, we just had one. I filled it out last year. Well, that didn't come up when I was Googling well, shit. Well, it's not so real time. They it's okay. Fake the numbers. And, Takes them you know. a minute. Colon is a beautiful part of Michigan. There's a lot of beautiful parts of Michigan with three lakes nearby. Like we said in one of our episodes, at least, there's a river and lake rule in Michigan. Yes. You know what that rule is? Within six miles, wherever you are. You are never more than six miles away from some sort of waterway. Venus and Doug Harry Stewart grew up in a small town together. His name is Doug Harry Stewart. That's weird. And his name isn't spelled like (laughs) H-A-R-R-Y. Like you would (laughs) expect it to be. Douglas Harry Stewart. Yes. Oh, you bet your sweet ass. We're going to... We're going to mock everything gonna about this. We're going to harry the fuck out of this Douglas. So, Venus was married to Douglas Harry Stewart. They married in 2002, literally four days after they started dating. I thought that was weird, but they basically knew each other. Uh, they grew up in that little ass town, so you know how that is. Venus had a criminal justice degree, but realized that she didn't like guns. So well, yeah, that's a problem. I, you might have thought about that before you took your degree, but that's okay, Venus. I do, I'm not dogging you. So she started working at a local bank. Douglas Harry joined the Marines. Douglas Harry, yes, Harry. Douglas Harry. Oh my God! When did he join the Marines? I don't know. I forgot to look it up. But you know what? I wonder if they balled his ass because his middle name was Harry. Oh, I'm sure. I they hope did. they. Hit him with oh Dougie Harry soap bars from a in a yeah no 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 case. we can't go there oh with this guy we can so he he was a marine you know and marines are very headstrong and proud oh, and all that stuff so amazing and after he got out he ended up working in the fast food wait arena hold up <laughs> time out you yeah, don't yeah. go from the fucking marines to fast food. Don't they educate you there? Isn't that their big draw-in? Uh, Come work for us and we'll educate you so yeah, you can get yeah, a great yeah, job yeah. after you get out. So I don't want to alienate anybody, but I was in the Army and I've had some run-ins after I got out 
with Marines, and it hasn't been pleasant. But anyway, okay, but back still, to our story. He the worked couple, in a fast fucking food yep. place after going into the yep. Marine. F- fucking fucking. Yep. The couple had two baby girls boot. Yes. Babies. With the cost of daycare and Venus making more money, <laughs> Dougie Harry became a stay-home dad. <laughs> oh, Dougie Harry, daddy. Daddy Dougie Harry. Apparently. Dad Harry Dougie. Oh, Dougie daddy. Oh, he's so sweet. Apparently, this is when he started really getting into the Xbox thing. Oh, I should have looked up what game he liked to play because I, I, of course, didn't recognize it. It, it, it literally caused the, the couple to separate a couple times. I 100% understand that Me because too. when a bitch is gaming all night long, uh, there's no time for relationship. Mm-mm. Venus wanted to get out. She, you know, like we said, they had separated a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But she decided, you know, for the sake of their children, she was going to give it another try. For the girls. Do it for the kids. They moved to Newport News. Don't do it for the kids, you Virginia. guys. Virginia. If your no, marriage right. is fucked up, don't do it for just, the kids. Jesus, right. just end kids it. Kids are going to be now. fine. They'll be fine. They're resilient little shits. Like Boot said, they moved to Newport News, Virginia. Wow, there's so much about that I didn't realize was weird. The cigarette thing. Dougie Harry went to work as a truck driver, which is very noble. Truck drivers are great. I, Dougie Harry on the road might be iffy. The couple lived in Virginia for about a year before Venus decided that she was going to take the girls back home to the mitten. Yeah. February 2010, she literally just left in the middle of the night. Dude, movie style. No offense to Venus. This is not a good way to go. Generally, at this point in the story, I'm thinking, not a good idea, Venus. Yeah, I don't. You don't like custody wise. Like, of you don't want to just take. A, I don't know. She took off with the kids in the middle of the night, though. Boo. She and the girls moved in with her parents back in Colon. Yes. Later in April of 2010, Venus was awarded full custody of the kids. I. I want to take a time out. Uh, again, okay. I don't know if the rules are different. I know here, if you leave, you take the kids and you leave the house, you're going to have custody issues. But I don't know. She was awarded full custody of the kids Who and knows? that was freaking awesome. I don't know how that works either. Me neither. Different everywhere you go. So I don't know how they worked it out. The morning of April 26th, 2010, Monday morning. Grandma it was a goddamn Monday morning was again. was already working, and Grandpa was sleeping. Yeah, Grandpa was sleeping, and Venus was down getting, you know, she was getting the girls ready for school. She was making their lunches and probably doing the backpack thing, and you put your shoe on, and goddamn it, put your, stop taking your shirt off. So with these girls' shenanigans being a little bit noisy, woke up Grandpa, so... He went downstairs to see what they were up to and what rambunctiousness mm-hmm. was all about. Well, you know what he found? He what? found the two girls. No uh, Venus. She wasn't anywhere. He went all the way around the house, inside the home, couldn't find her. Her car was there. Her purse was there. Everything that would indicate, you know. Yeah, she was still home, she's apparently. She's still freaking home. But, her well, car's there. She's missing. Yeah, gone. The girls were, I believe, around five and two. Don't quote me on that one. You know, Grandpa was like, where'd your mom go? And they were like, I don't know. Yeah. We were screwing around. We don't know where mom went. Grandpa did notice that in the walkway area next to the driveway, the small landscaping stones were thrown about and looked like someone had stomped around there, kicking up the dirt and rocks. This might kind of sound silly, but... He had a really nice cemented driveway. Basically, it was the landscaping area alongside the driveway. Mm. There were no rocks on his driveway. The man kept it nice. Everything so it was, wasn't like yeah, it was a perfect. gravel driveway. You know what I'm saying? So it was very noticeable that their landscaping rocks had been kicked about and into the driveway. So 
he noticed yep. that right away. He also found on the ground a pink hair tie and packaging for a GD blue A goddamn blue tarp. tarp. Just the packaging just Why? ripped open and in the driveway. Fucking nuts. This is when Grandpa called 911. He kept his home tidy and knew where everything was and if anything was ever out of place. And I think that if, yeah, your driveway's kept that nice and a bunch of rocks are strewn about and you can see dirt prints going on, you're going to wonder. This is when Grandpa called 911. And here's the 911 call. Just not there? Yeah. Is your vehicle here. missing or anything? No, vehicle... Is here, her kids are here, and she is gone. Okay. Have you tried calling her or anything? Yeah, we can't get hold of her. So they try calling her, like you said. Yeah. Can't get a hold of her. The police. police come there. Yeah. They start collecting what little evidence is there, which is basically the hair tie and the baggie to the tarp. tarp. The GD tarp? The goddamn fucking blue tarp. Ew. Larry had told the police about Doug, Harry, Harry and, Doug. and the custody situation. Obviously, as in all situations, they try to get to Doug, Harry to... To question him. He's the ex. He's the first man to fucking look and at. And conveniently, he didn't answer any of his calls. Well, no, not that day. Of course not. Oh, and Dougie Harry had been in Virginia all day. Yeah, witnesses... And CCTVs had caught him all okay. day good, long good on alibi. video in his apartment, Perfect. in his car, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> he gave the cops a step-by-step -step itinerary of his entire day, and it appears that it all checked out. That's knuck and futz. It is. Searchers began scouring the area starting out from the house where she disappeared from. Detectives checked Doug Harry's alibi, and it seemed to be pretty airtight. Solid. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they saw, you know. Video, time video, stamps. Video, his all car that stuff. leaving, the things. They started to look for a strange dude that had been seen around the Adams Lake area. The two witnesses said that he was wet and approached them asking for a cigarette. That like, just sounds like, like Michigan stuff to me. straight that, up. You're wet. I mean, we, that happens to it's us. It's Michigan. I'm glad they said something, though, because you never know. So they did actually get a sketch of that mustached guy. Mm -hmm. They but, were still checking yeah. out Doug Harry due to the upcoming divorce. Harry Doug. Harry Doug And the nuts. custody battle. And that was a big motive. God, I wish his name was Dick. Dick Harry. Dick Harry Doug nuts. I don't know. Anyways. That obviously would be a big motive, right? So they... They obtained a warrant to a search warrant. Harry Harry Doug's. Yeah. <laughs> Harry uh, Doug's Virginia home. Yeah, they went all the way through his house. They did all the things. They took his computer, his electronics. They searched everything. They, yeah, they even checked his bank account. Out of all of his belongings, in the back seat of his truck, they found the Holy Grail. Oh. The... Hail Mary Pass. A receipt? A mother trucking receipt. Mm. Dude, they said his truck was kind of a mess. And I sounds, could, sounds like your car. I kind of feel like it was. Yeah. You made a video of you going into my car. Like oh, I it, put on safety glasses. You, I feel like you had a one of those and hazmat things yeah, on yeah, for Christ. Dude, it's a little bit of shit in there. It's not like you're going to die. Little? Oh, my God. I almost died going it, in there. Oh. Dude, just opening the door. Okay. Okay. Let me just tell you what was on this receipt boot because it literally, in large print, said these exact words. On the receipt at the top, I decided it should have said, Special Walmart Skill Kit. We've heard this in 862 different true crime stories. A killer kit. Oh, my God. This is what it said. Low price for a killer kit. Large oh, okay. LG DG shovel. So, large digging shovel. Gloves. An 8 by 10 tarp. Very specific in yep. size. Yep. And a cap, which means like a winter hat. For the grand total of this killer kit, Walmart killer kit, twenty five sixty nine, <laughs> all day long. Dated April twenty fifth, 
the day before Venus disappeared from a Walmart in Ohio. Yeah, it was a receipt Mm -hmm. in his truck with the Walmart killer kit from the day before. But he was supposed to be in Virginia, remember? Yeah. How did he do that? Oh, do, 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 do. Yeah, and they actually have he, mm-hmm. video evidence of him being there at the Walmart. Harry Doug's just so smart. He was. I fucking and, love Oh my this. God, he used his credit card? This to, is great. Yeah, yeah he's, it it's better. 2010. He's in Wally World buying his kill kit. They have clear ass video of him. Purchasing these disgusting products. And then he went and, pr- you know how they have like different little areas where you can go buy eyeglasses or oh sure phones or yeah, get your, kind of a, ooh, sorry, phone, or get your hair cut. Yeah. So then he goes and buys a, um, hey, Hi. natty daddy. Mm. So then he goes and buys one of those like throwaway track phones in, what do you do, boo? Used his own fucking credit card. Yeah, that's that's the kind of uh, he's, you know, really intelligent individual. So he is. fucking smart. Oh. I can't believe he was actually a marine. That's, I can't believe it. <laughs> that's how smart he was. I really, <laughs> I'm. You are just asking you guys, for it. No offense to you guys, but marines are supposed to be like the elite of the elite. Exactly. That's yeah. what the commercials say. But no, this guy uses his own goddamn credit card. To buy a, a throwaway phone. On video. Yep. On video. Plain as day. You can see him. Look it so up. So Dougie was brought back to Michigan. A little Dougie. He was saying that she had run off just like, yeah. And him. He was just like, pshaw, she's not missing. She just ran off and left the girls with grandma and grandpa. I have nothing to do with it. I'm innocent. Yep. Around this time, Grandpa Larry found Venus's journal and read more than he probably wanted to about the marriage his daughter had with Doug Harry. Harry Doug. Dougie Harry. Harry. He found. Harry Crutch. Through this journal that the marriage was worse than they knew. I believe it said he physically abused her. Yeah. So. Venus leaving Doug Harry in the middle of the night makes a lot more sense. It totally does now because, like we say, you, you run. You how many get. stories have we done? They try to leave. No, oh yeah, leaving is the most dangerous part. Um, it also stated that there was sexual abuse between Harry Doug and one of their daughters. Oh, well, oh come on, mother fucking. Fucker. There were even police reports from February of 2010 where their five-year-old daughter told told them that their father, Dougie Harry, had her touch him. Yeah. Oh. oh. This motherfucker, I just want to stab him right in the eyeball. I think putting a taser to his nuts would be nice. It would be highly entertaining to watch. You know, we hear just, stories like this, ugh. and it's just nauseating. It's disturbing. It's, it's disturbing. Having found all of this, they went back to Virginia to re-interview all the people that had stated that they saw Doug Harry on that day. You know, his alibi with all the CCTVs and everything. Yeah, it turns out the, the dude had a winter hat on, his hoodie up. Sunglasses on the whole time, and he was in the lawyer's office. Yeah, he even went to his lawyer's office that way. They found his phone records and numerous calls to a man named Ricky Spencer, and he lived in Delaware. Interesting. And I say man at the time, he was a young man. Just a kid who lived at home with his parents going to college who happened to also play Xbox Live. Uh Uh-huh. Yep, here's the connection. That's where they met. Yes, sir. They met through the shit talk that goes on through the majority of these Xbox games. That fucking, it drives me crazy. Can they just have normal conversations? All you hear is, your mama sucks dick, or you're a pussy, blah, blah, blah. They're just a bunch of crotches, and it irritates me. Oh, here it comes. I'm sorry. We're going to get some The ba- gamers feedback. themselves don't irritate me, but why? Why I get shit talking even, but it's like out of Just control. Just knock it off. Yeah. Well, I think because they have that anon- 
anonymity, anonymity that uh, they just feel like they can hide and say whatever they want. It's it, just weird it drives to me. me nuts. I love I don't like people it. play your games. It's cool. That's great. Okay, so they find this Ricky dude, and they find out that him and old Harry Doug would play Xbox Live six to ten hours a day. You know, you could hone a very good musical skill if you're. Uh, you could practicing probably an raise instrument. the two daughters that oh, you have. Yeah. Oh, let's not even talk about Jesus that right Christ, now. Yeah, Al right? Friday. Yeah, most important. So, police get little Ricky Spencer into the interrogation room and. They start the questioning. April 1st. That's April Fool's Day, right? I know, right? 2010. Like, no joke, yo. After having chatted online for about nine months, they met in person and went to Bush Gardens, where Doug, yeah, yeah, Dougie yeah. Harry would continue his grooming process with Ricky. Ugh. This and this isn't even creepy. a sexual grooming. This is grooming in a whole different disgusting way. He told, you know, he was like, oh, we're having a great day and blah, blah, blah. But he kind of slips into Ricky about how Venus is crazy. All the oh, shit yeah. about Venus that wasn't true. Like, or his kids were in danger with oh. her. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff he stated he needed to save his kids. Oh. Finally, after Doug lost the custody hearing, he told Ricky all about it and talked Ricky into and covering for him while he went to Michigan. Oh, he was like, uh, you kind of look like me, man. A brother from another mother. He literally was like, uh, I just want you to look like me. I want you to go around doing normal things on this certain day while I bust 11 or 12 hours back to Michigan to take care of business. Cops started digging into Ricky's stuff on April 26th, 2010, the exact day that Venus had just vanished into nowhere, his phone was turned off almost the entire day. All day. Ricky's phone was off. It pinged one time, and do you know where that was? Ooh. It was at Harry Dougie's apartment. Ooh. And come on, this is an Xbox kid. There's not a chance in hell he's going to leave his phone <laughs> off all fucking day. <laughs> nope. Ricky looked bored as F. As fuck in the interrogation room, and it irritated me. He was like leaning on his hands like this. Oh, yeah, was such like, an inconvenience. So, yeah, that's the word. The detectives explained the whole story, and Ricky just kind of spit out his conversations with Doug. Didn't take much pulling of the teeth. They, of course, tried to extract the exact words that Doug Harry said to him. What exactly was going on to do in Michigan while Ricky was covering what for exactly him? He was, what exactly he was going to do in Michigan while Ricky was covering for him. They were trying to get out the words. So Ricky finally says, Doug said he was going to take care of business in Michigan. And I'm just going to get rid of her. Oh. Those were the things they were trying to extract. What exactly oh, did Doug say he was going to do? Like, did he say he's going to go talk to her? Oh, here Is we go. Is he going to go rape her? Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, Rick, Ricky said he figured Doug Harry was going to just go finish her off. Yeah. So after everything Ricky gave, all the information that Ricky gave the police officers, the detectives, they arrested Doug Two months later, in June of 2010, for the murder of his soon-to-be ex-wife, Venus. Every year, the detectives would visit Doug Harry to ask where he put Venus. Harry, Doug. He denied it every year until 2010. Yep. And although they had yet to find Venus, they definitely had enough to charge him. They had Ricky. They had the receipt from Ohio. The video from the Walmart in Ohio, a throwaway phone, that wrapper that was found in the driveway for the tarp, mm. and guess what? Oh, uh, that that had Dougie's fingerprints on it. Yes, nice. That I like it. One wrapper that he left in the driveway had his fingerprint on it. Oh my God, he's a Marine for one. Yeah, but he doesn't. Secondly, he never watches he, crime shows. What the fuck? You gotta. 
Cover Everybody your ch- knows oh that. For Christ's God. sakes, all Friday. Oh, he's a stupid Marine. Yeah, a, uh, no, a former you're Marine. asking for it. Uh, oh, yeah. Seriously. That's, yeah. So between Ricky and the fingerprint, mm-hmm. A year later, Dougie Harry went on trial. And Harry Dougie pled not guilty. Well, of course he did. During the trial, they put Ricky on the stand. He really was their only witness. Ricky would describe Doug Harry as his best friend. He stated that Doug would call him brothers from another mother. Oh, yeah, it's romantic. It's so cute. He also told Ricky exactly how he murdered Venus. Uh, we're not going to share that. No, uh, so Ricky basically was on the stand and told us how she was murdered. He gave Ricky a to-do list and his credit cards for the day of April 26th. Yeah, Ricky wore Doug Harry's clothes. Ooh. I heard a firework. Fireworks are happening. Happy New Year. Basically, what happened is Doug gave Ricky an, the itinerary, right? Mm-hmm. And then Ricky wore Doug's clothes for the day and drove Doug's car around. Yeah. Hence, Creating an alibi. Hence... The Ricky, videos of yeah, oh, you so know, and so that we he's saw. wearing his clothes. Do you think he just wore his underwear and everything? <gasps> I bet he just, did. Yeah. I wear your underwear I kept and I had to buy some of my own. Yeah. I've never had monogrammed which underwear before. Also, Thank you. Exp- which also explains how Doug was so able to give the police like a minute to minute itinerary of what he did that day because he had it printed out for Ricky. So Ricky's on the stand, right? He's visibly shaken. He asked Doug on the phone if it was worth it. And Doug Harry said it was to give his kids some sort of future. And remember, Ricky is still, you know, had been convinced that Venus was crazy. According right. to Harry Doug. People believe what they're told. And he that, was groomed to believe that, yeah, it's really that unfortunate. she was nuts. And so basically this is like after they're talking on their little track phones. And, and you can watch this courtroom nuts. testimony online. He definitely seemed legit to have more regret than he did in the interrogation. In, interrog- interrogation? <laughs> interrogation rooms. Yeah, he was very shaken up and at times kind of crying. More... Emotion than we ever saw from Harry Doug Balls. The jury deliberated. Harry Ball Dugs. The jury deliberated and came back with a guilty conviction. Guilty motherfucker. Charging Harry Doug, that's Douglas Harry Dougie Harry, Doug. with first degree premeditated murder. Fucking A Skippy, it was all kinds of premeditated. Harry Doug gets life without <laughs> parole. And just like everyone else, he still says he's innocent. Oh, yeah, of course he says He would never that. do such a thing. I'm a Marine. Okay, here we go. Ricky I'm pled, an ex-Marine. Ricky pled guilty to a conspiracy to commit manslaughter. He testified against <laughs> Doug Harry and cooperated with the law. Honestly, I, I don't know. He was just a kid. He was very much groomed. I guess he I got... I feel bad for him. I do. I, yeah. I think a year was... I'm no judge, but I think it's enough. Uh, we know. We know what kind of <sighs> shit people do. Sadly, even though Doug was put in jail for the murder, the family still had no idea where Venus's body was. They were unable to have a funeral. The family and friends continued searching the area for her body. Her family had posted missing person signs all over their small community. And Doug Harry's freaking parents were literally going around taking these signs down off of the poles. Like ripping them down. Because it was after their son had been convicted of the murder, but they hadn't found the body yet. So they were like, it says our son was convicted of murder on here. It's like, well, he fucking was convicted of murder. So there's literally video of them also online having a fight with Venus's mom about keeping these flyers up. It's disgusting. I can't. It's a mess. I mean, I major mess. I get that you want to believe that your little Dougie didn't do such a thing. Yeah, Dickie. Can we start calling him Dickie now? I I want to call him little Harry Dick. Harry Harry Dougie Dick. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got nine nine problems, but a bitch ain't one. 
Eight years went by and Venus had still not been found, despite numerous searches and numerous times of asking Dougie Harry, Harry Dick, what he did with her body. <sighs> he just wouldn't say anything until I think 2010 they finally asked him. 2010, I think he finally admitted to murdering her, but that's all he said. I kind of got lost with the dates. I know. In 2018, they asked Harry, Harry Dick Doug, again, where Venus was for the sake of his daughters, because it's their mom, and both families' closure. And you know what Harry Dick started doing? Oh, he started... He started bargaining. <laughs> oh, my God. For, for he, an Xbox. First, this is ridiculous. He was going to tell them something for in exchange for an Xbox. Goddamn Xbox to murder his wife with, basically. Uh, through your yeah, surrogate, oh, whatever. My holy God. So, on October 22nd, 2018, they freaking take Harry Dick Doug Dick Harry Balls out with his little feet handcuffed in his hand. Hands handcuffed, <laughs> hence the word handcuffed, to the area that he says that he had buried her. He points out two areas real close to each other that she most likely was, and he was very casual in the way that he described how he carried her there, how, mu how much dirt, how many yards away, and Yeah, all he that was stuff. like, blah, there were stones blah. over here, so I couldn't do it there, and there were stumps here, so it's got to be here or here. He then, for the first time in all of these years, told them exactly what had happened. Ugh. After his 11-plus hour trip from Virginia, his Walmart stop in Ohio, he drove to Colon, Colon, Michigan. He pulls into her parents' driveway, calls Venus, and tells her to come outside. I'm sure flabbergasted that he's outside. They just went through this child support thing or custody battle a couple of days first she went outside and he knocked her out put her in his car and drove her into the woods hence the mixing up of the stones in the driveway oh that's how it happened yeah they I struggled see. in that area next to the car she was struggling you know the kids were in play and they didn't hear anything so this is weird he he waited until she woke up before he Ugh. stabbed her to death yeah how do we so know that? He, uh, because he told him he knocked her out. Oh, my God. He's a douchebag. Threw her in the car. Uh-huh. Drove her to that spot in the woods where he finally showed them in 2018. And he said, I waited till she woke up from being knocked out. Oh, here we and go. And then I stabbed her. So, so she, she literally know fucking knew. Who killed her? Yeah. He didn't say that part, but you know that's why he did it. What a fucking dick. He yeah. could have just stabbed her while she was out. It's already bad enough you're stabbing her. Why? 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 I don't know. Oh, yeah, oh don't my understand. God. Uh, Fortunately, the family could fuckers. finally lay Venus to rest properly. That is the only beauty out of this entire if anything, story. Yeah, if there is beauty, oof. there just isn't. Later... Harry Dick would claim he just couldn't see any other way out of the situation. And he now deeply regrets what he did. Oh, of course he does. Oh, my God. There's so many ways out of the situation. Hey, did he get the Xbox? Maybe try not being a dick, Harry. And you might be able to see your kids. Did he get the Xbox? Well, boo. This is what Chris Gotts said. He was a spokesman for the Michigan Department of Corrections. He confirmed to CBS News that Harry, <laughs> Harry Doug, Dicky Dick, did make a list of demands to his department that included an Xbox. However, Gott said, the gaming devices were already planned for the specialized 140 inmate unit for military veterans which is where Doug was housed, and that he said all the gaming units that had been donated haven't been installed yet because they needed to be retrofitted so that nobody could internet the access on them, access the internet on them. They could only play video games. Okay. 
while he's thinking he's getting his way with this Xbox thing, they were already bringing in Xboxes mm. to the prison, <laughs> which I also am a little pissed off about. Yeah, they don't need that. No, you don't get to fucking sit there and play Xbox all goddamn... It's not all day. They have, like, limited time periods where they can play it, but... Oh, no, why? No, you fucking cocksuckers. You get health. You get food all right all let's, let's not rant about that you know there, how so i am much. with the prison mm-hmm. system we only have a four more points no Gots. you guys don't get to have xboxes nope. Nope. except they do i'm just sure mad. they do yeah and they get better tv than what we else have. did got say got said corrections officials encouraged him to cooperate with investigators he said all of Stewart's demands for special privileges, including that he'd be allowed to attend his parents' funerals when they when they were to pass away, uh, those were denied. Denied. Harry Doug. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. He we thought only. He was crafty. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, I forgot. We I just like, want to listen to that over and over I'm again. I'm going to do it again. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Wrong ah! one. Oh. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Ah. Your Highness, that is just Well, Harry funny. Doug was a U.S. military veteran, so he was already... Oh, he was allowed to use the Xboxes, but he was also allowed to participate in a program to train dogs while he was incarcerated. (laughs) On top of that, he'd be allowed to teach a class in prison. All kinds of 18 ways of fucked up. A dateline. You killed this person. You know, just just lock me up. I would be so much happier. I could do things. You can train dogs. You can teach people. You get fed. Yep. You get uh, insurance. What the fucking fuck? Yeah. Why not? And all the sex you could ever ask oh, for. Oh, for sure. Just a little spit. It's all you need. Yeah. For... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, oh. Don't, not, no, don't fart. Mm, nope. Anyway. A Dateline episode years later would show Venus's mom and Doug Harry's sister sitting together trying to heal. I mean, it was kind of cool, in my opinion, and I could have taken maybe 10 more minutes to look this up, but I feel like it should have been both sets of parents, seeing as they were the ones tearing down the missing posters, Doug's parents were. Either way, right? families are trying to heal. I didn't actually watch the Dateline thing. Maybe we should... I didn't either. Well, we should. I was going to say we should go down and watch it, but nah, we're going to... We have to watch. finish pre-gaming. We have Dexter to watch yet. We have more Six Feet Under to watch yet. Yeah, and it's not even midnight. Dude. And you know we and, have to stay up until midnight. Well, if we can handle it. I don't know if I can. That's another 45 minutes. You guys, that is the story of U.S. military veteran Harry Balls Doug. Doug Harry Balls. What a fucking douche canoe. Yeah. Not very smart either. Your Highness. Can he just watch a true crime show, please? Your Highness. Yes, sir. Uh, can we have a happy ending? Please. Uh, apparently, fireworks are going off already. So oh, that, that ooh, was, yeah. must have been good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Was not in my pants, but uh-huh. yeah, okay. <laughs> So well, this week, my pants won't be that way till I'm riding in that Tesla in Las Vegas. I'll bring a towel. <laughs> You're gonna have to. This week we are featuring a fantastic singer, songwriter, guitar player extraordinaire, all around musician. Oh, extraordinaire. great, great musician, Mark Heisinga. The song this is, is called, the time. This is the time. Mark Heisinga also plays with the Moonrays. Currently. You can find his stuff on Bandcamp. You can find him on Facebook. And you can see him with the Moonrays on YouTube. Mark Heisinga. This is the time. Here we go. Thank you, Mark. This is the time. To let all fables go This is the time 
So turn up the radio Your kiss is like wine So just let the feeling flow We cross the This is the time That we all talked about This is the time For the week to be stout For those who have for choosing Michigan Murders and Music. Please rate the show wherever you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listening to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we purchased our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.